מחס. קאסה. לא, קאסה חניבו? about last time that we, we are doing the Bromas even though we did not have a Seder. <coughs> yeah. So we do Chazal or Mesakin that we should say a hundred brachas daily. And we, had, we gave a list of these brachas and how we do this in Shabbos as well. And even on Yom Kippur and Atainus we, 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 we smell the Samim and we, we hear the brachas of the Toida and the Toida. Now, the now the berachas hashachar really one should say when one is obligated when one hears the sh- the sound of the rooster in the morning say hanoi sam lasech rivinel hafchemiyam alim when he puts his feet down on the, the ground says reikal tzamayim puts on his clothing. When he stretches, like if kufim, everything when it, the tilos edayim, the tilos edayim, everything when it is the time. However, there was a number of reasons why Chazal said that we should wait till we do it in shul. Number one, we said that today's days people don't keep their hands clean, and in the morning, and people are always touching themselves, and it's not appropriate to say, "My hands are tummy," so you should wait to say it in shul. Another thing is. Because there are um, people that don't know the brachas by heart. Um, those days there weren't sedurim and there was an issue. So because many people did not know. So therefore they said that we should say them in shul. And the chazan should say it. And everyone can answer, Amen and Biyaitza. That's where you left off. Sif hey. Now we're holding Sif hey and page Kuf Samachas. When one organizes them and says them in the shul, what should be the order of the brachis? You should say them the order that they usually occur. What usually happens first? The, the, the rooster crows. So you say, Everything in the stage is when it happens. Even though you're saying it in shul later, but it should be in the order that it occurs. Call makam makam the female hagi. Some places it's a little different than other places. For example, there are some countries where people don't go barefoot at all. They don't walk barefoot at all. They put their shoes on right away next to their bed. And afterwards they walk. So in those countries, in those brachas you should say the bracha she'asli called tzarki. And afterwards, Hamechim Mitzah de Gover. One who prepare, Hashem prepares the steps of man. Because they put on their shoes before they walk. However, Mekoy Meshachil Chim Tzatz Yochef. Zeichem, by some places that have the custom that they walk a little bit barefoot around the house. And they, and they put on their shoes and they go outside the house. Back in Meilam Shiyetzal Shem, when they go out to the street, go to the marketplace, they go to shop, they put on their shoes. Mevarech Hamechim Mitzah de Gover Tchilo. Put that first. And that's how we do it in our countries. We say, Hamechim Mitzad HaGover first, because people do walk around their house barefoot. Mm-hmm. And then we say, Sha'asu the Kotsarki, which is referring to the shoes Hashem um, created for us shoes, that we have the ability to wear shoes. Are slippers considered shoes? No. no. Only real shoes. Now, on Tisha B'Av and Yom Kippur, when we don't wear leather shoes, we actually don't recite the bracha Sha'al Sadiq called Tzarki, because yeah. real shoes are considered leather. Wow. Everything else is fake. Well, well, when we can put them on, then we can recite that. Okay. The next day, you recite Sha'al Sadiq Tzarki. Now, Im Tov so Sayyid so we don't put it on, we don't say it for Marv. No. We wait till the next morning. My river ready is the next day, so the mm-hmm. next morning will be good. In Tav Asayda Brachis, if one made a mistake, because in Tisha B'Av and Yom Kippur, for a 24 hour period you couldn't wear it, starting from the evening, that whole entire day was missed. So therefore, you, you, the next day, you say for the next day. 
Now, what happens if you said the order of the brachas out of order? Is that an issue? In ta besede ha brachas, the middle of the aim bekach klom. Nothing wrong with that. These two brachas, you have to say first matir asurim and then zaykir fufim. Shembeira zaykir fufim liyasi barach matir asurim. Once you say zaykir fufim, that's one who makes people who are bent during the night. You're bent over to be upright. You can't anymore make the bracha matir asurim, the Ebishter who allows you to stretch your bones. Shabechlal kifas hakoyim u'atolis yivarim tunosim. Once you say Zayf of Kfufim, it includes Matar Asurim. So if you start saying Matar Asurim first, good. I can say Matar Asurim first, and then I can go say Zayf of Kfufim. But once you say Zayf of at first, there's no more Inga to say Matar Asurim. Now, what about the last three brachas? Shalisani Ovet, Shalisani Goy, Shalisani Ovet, Shalisani Isha. When Beda to Shalisani Ovet, Yaslava Shalisani Goy. If you said Shalisani Ovet first, you could still say the bracha shlani goy. Why? How could you? L'chora, asha goy geru me eved. A goy is worse than a slave. She shmaila ba goy she me eved. Even though the goy is worse than a slave, in a way, once I said to Hashem shlai sani avid, so of course I'm I'm shlai sani goy. Thank you, Hashem, for not making me a slave. So how can you now go say shlai sani goy? Shlai Sani Goy is, 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 is already included. If you say, Shalai, thanking Hashem, he didn't make me a Eved, for sure they didn't Shalai make Sani. me a Goy. So therefore, the order of Lachatchilo is to say Shlai Sani Goy first. And then they go, he not only didn't make me a Goy, he didn't create me as an Eved. It's a slave. They're going step by step. But if you went to the second step first, Lachori, you shouldn't be able to say Shlai Sani Goy. He says, no. The Goy has certain Maila over an Eved. And therefore, you could say that Shlai Sani Goy. An Eved, a slave, children that are born to the slave are not considered like they have Yichus. Slaves were not considered like their Miyuchus. So they had, they had they, they, the, 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 the master wanted that he should have children. So he, he brought one slave to, to this maidservant. She had children. He made more slaves. It's not considered yichos. It's not yichos. Only through the mother's side, it's not from the father. That's Evid Ivri or Evid Goy we're talking? Evid Kanani. Evid, Evid Goy. Huh? But he, once he becomes an Evid, He's worse than a Goy. He's a Goy Evid. So in certain aspect, in certain aspect, obviously the Goy is, the, is worse. But there's a certain advantage that a Goy has that a goy has yichos. A goy has yichos. He has a father. He has a father. <laughs> There's a very interesting clip where a certain person, uh, a, a shliach, comes to the rabbi by dollars, and then the previous uh, president, um, first president George Bush, he came, he was, uh, he had, had some type of heart, uh, something Bob in the morning, something with his heart was irregular, and he went to the hospital. So he went to the Rebbe Dollars and he mentioned that George Ben Dorothy should have <laughs> should feel better. You know, she had, he had a, <laughs> see he mentioned his mother's name. So the, the Rebbe found it a bit amusing that he was you know coming to ask her bracha for the president. But the Rebbe told the Rebbe gave a little smile and the Rebbe told him that by going you say it's the father's name, not the mother's name. Father's when it comes to Rafur Shlema, yeah. so you should say Ben the father. He, he didn't know the father's name. The, <laughs> so that was it with the whole. And he said, better than worry, better than worry. Then he said to him, the main thing is to make sure that he gives the billion dollars that he promised to Eretz Yisrael. And if you have any influence, you should make sure that he gives the money that America no, promised Eretz Yisrael. No, That's the main thing. That. He told who that? This is the person uh, who came by dollars to the Rebbe. So the Ma'is was Lagabi that. That detail, the guy has yichos. The gabi, in general, of course, that being a guy is much worse. Another thing why a guy has a certain advantage over the evid. A guy can become a ger. An evid on his own can't become a ger. If the yid frees him, if, if, the, if the, the master frees him, he can make him. A, he can make him into a ger. He becomes a ger tzedek. 
comes a full, full Jew. But the guy on his own could do it. He doesn't need anyone to tell him. Whenever he wants, he could do it. So therefore, even if one made a mistake and said Shalei Sani of it first, thank you Hashem for not making me a slave, there's still room to say a thank you and a praise for not making him a guy. No. Same thing if one said a bracha first Shalaisani Isha. We know Shalaisani Isha is the final one. He said it first, so seemingly if he said it, don't, he didn't make me like a woman. Remember before, by the way, all these differentiations between a goy, Abed, and Isha have to do um, not with their status, but with their status when it comes to mitzvahs. Meaning a goy is not obligated any mitzvahs. Of the tight, right? Um, Evid and Isha are chayiv in in mitzvahs. Evid is chayiv mitzvah like a Isha. Goy oh, doesn't have sheva mitzvah to no? Okay, but not 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 from the tayag mitzvahs. He has his own sheva mitzvahs. Now the Isha, she doesn't have mitzvah, not, not doesn't have mitzvahs like the man. Right. So you're thanking Hashem that He gave me all these mitzvahs. Now. So you would think, if you said Shalai Asani Isha, what more can you say? Hashem, he didn't make me Isha. So now, there's a need to go say he didn't make me this and this? Of course, I, I even I even told you, thank you for not making me Isha. Says al no, still in all Yasa Levada, Shasani Goi You could still say the other brachas. She'ishen yachay l'ischayi b'chal mitzkoi nachi she's gay. Ha'isha, a lady, no matter what, she can never become chay in all the mitzvahs. Like a nachri, she is gaya, a nachri that can convert. The avish is tacher rabbi, a slave who his master frees him. So chlitin haydal a mokim baruch hu shleisam chelkei kim olosh vehem. You have to give thank, praise to Hashem that He did not put our portion, place us in the portions of even the best of these three. La zocha lavet Hashem these kod of the yisvukum. You have to thank Hashem that He brought you close to Him more than everyone else. So that's why you have to say them all three, even if you mix the order. So it's only the guarding, the mixing the order of Zayk, where you said Zayk if Kvufim first, before Matas, and then you can't go Matas. Everything else, if the order changes, you can still say the other brachas. Atkan regarding the order. But they have a, a difference between Sfaradim and Ashkenazim. How is the order? It's what you say it's a different than yeah. the Siddur. Yeah, mm-hmm. very different. Very really different. Really Interesting. Hearts for all the very different, yeah. Oh, okay. so it shouldn't be that much different. So, so Not an this, order. So it's only going what at first, first earlier. You say it's the end. Uh, maybe some small changes. I don't imagine it's that small that, changes, ma- yeah. that big major changes. So Ashkenazi, I know. I know Spanish. No. I, I just, I'm davening when I was up on Friday. So the minion star six six uh, six twenty is Bochas, six twenty five Foido. So you have to say Bochas loud. So I right. say they they. So it's a very small uh, change. Mm. We did now. There was actually talking about you know Goy wants to become a girl. There was a story with a shliach who had a connection with an actor, um, an actor, a non-Jewish actor in California, Shriach Tera Bekonian. Mm-hmm. Um, and this actor became very close to the Shriach and he really enjoyed the message of Yiddishkeit and he wanted to convert. And he, and he, what, he wanted to convert. He wanted to convert for money he, or for... His, A few years ago he passed away, not long ago. His name was John Voigt. Oh, he's well known. He spoke. He was a big supporter of Israel. Yeah. So this this John Voigt, he loved Jews, and and he wanted. And what I heard was he wanted to convert. Abi Kuni wrote to the Rebbe about this, and the Rebbe said that he should tell him that he could have more influence as a non-Jew on the world and help Jewish people than being a Jew to help Jewish people. So he has no chiv to become a Jew, right? So he wants to become a Jew, but there's no chiyuv from the become a Jew. Other rabbi, when it's, uh, a guy comes to Bezin, the, the first attitude push, is you push, push him away, him out, yeah. see if he to see if he really means the MS. See if do we it. don't have any ingen to go around making ger. We don't have any. Ingen. So, but he wanted to become a ger. But the Rebbe said, "Listen, you want you care about us. You care about you as being a non-Jew. 
can do the message, bring out the message to the non-Jewish world and, and, and do much more in different areas than being a, being a Jew. Right. That's your shlichus. His shlichus was to remain a guy. There was once a... Uh, there's a guy from... Uh, someone who lives in Muncie. Uh, he came, I think, originally from a Frum family, but he drifted away, and he became from the hippie movement. He was very involved in the hippie movement. And at one point, he met Rabbi Nussi Garari, the, the Rebbe Shriach in Buffalo, New York. And he had a lot of questions about Yiddishkeit. And, and he, so he had told them, these questions, you have to go visit the Rebbe. Was not really way, any way to meet the Rebbe then, and he was, you know, and he was this big hippie and with all his long hair and everything. And it was a very, very cold wintering day. So he came to 770, and maybe Rebbe had told him what to do. He basically, the Rebbe was going to come to 770, he was going to try to approach the Rebbe as the Rebbe enters 770 to Davin, to go to, to his room to get ready to go Davin. So before he enters 770, he's going to stand outside. And there were a group of uh, people waiting for the Rebbe. And the Rebbe had come. He right away stopped the Rebbe. And he asked the Rebbe a few questions. And he conversed with the Rebbe for maybe uh, 15 minutes. The one where the Rebbe go like this and like this? He, yeah. That's so wow. He was in front of um, 770. It was very, very cold. And he... Asked the Rebbe, you know, God. where is God? So the Rebbe pointed to his, the Rebbe like this. To his heart. And uh, he asked the Rebbe a bunch of questions. I don't remember all the questions. One the of the Rebbe things like he this. asked all over the place. is what is what is the mission of a, in this world for a black man, for an Indian, for, for, for different, for Goyim, for non-Jewish people? So the Rebbe told him like this. The Rebbe said, the mission of a black man is to be the best black man he could be. The mission of an Indian man is to be the best Indian man he could be. And mm -hmm. the mission of a Jew is to be the best Jew he is to connect to Hashem and Shemaim. That's what he told him. And he, he, the whole conversation took him very much. You know, and he was very... Changed. Changed his whole life, this whole conversation he had with the Rebbe. And that's when he made his whole return. And he has a whole from family and, and lives in Mansi today. At one point the Rebbe told him the Rebbe is in your heart. He spoke to them in Yiddish. He knew Yiddish. Yeah. So he said Avu, you know, and uh, Avu is the Yiddish. So the Rebbe called like this and he touched his heart. Mm. It's, it's in your heart. So he said when the Rebbe touched me, he touched me. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, okay. Wow. Everyone has to do their mission. The stone has to be a stone. And the blade of grass has to be the glitter. Everyone has to do what their mission is. When everyone does what their mission is, everything's good. And every human being and every person has his talent and his area, what he's supposed to do and, and she's supposed to do. And we have to do what our mission in this world is. And when we do it, then we're happy. But how do you know we you don't know? do it, we're not happy. Well, how do you know what's your mission? Ah. We have in our so show yeah, there's different guy. ways from different svarim. And we have in our show a guy, that he's, he lives in Long Island, he's a gardener. He, was, he married a... Zerach. Zerach. He died in an ocean many times. Yeah, he met him at the matzah bakery. <laughs> so his <laughs> wife is a Giyore Schwarze from, yeah. not from New York. Yeah, from, from the, very nice lady. Yeah. She yeah. ate by me once. She ate by me a couple yeah. times. The question she asks and the knowledge she knows about the dish guy is embarrassing people over here. Yeah. Yeah. She goes so much. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. She's very and she take it very serious. Yeah. Very intelligent. Very, yeah. very intelligent. You can see Chen. You can see... No, wow. No. Yes. My, my wife has spoken with her on a number of occasions. They don't have kids, huh? Not yet. Siva. Medinas elu neigen levarech hanais na yav koyach. In these countries, the custom is to say hanais na yav koyach. Do you say that in your seder? Yeah, I tell you. V'teknu ha-goinim ach ha-chasim as ha-talmud. The goinim enacted this bracha after the Gemara was closed. Meaning, there was already a period of time where the, the Gemara was, the, the, the writing of the Gemara was over. <coughs> in general, we only say brachas that are mentioned in the Gemara. Um, uh, someone else comes today and says, make this, say this bracha, say that bracha. You can't make up your own brachas. 
this bracha was unique that it was already after the Chatimat HaTalmud. And it was in the time, a period called the Goinim, of Hai Goin, of the Shivi Goin, the different Goinim. <coughs> Why did they make this bracha? The world got, people got weaker. Generation when people got shvach, they got weak. Every day a person's um, strength becomes renewed. A man of flesh and blood gives a, pres- a, a, a deposit to his friend. And gives it back to him, it's used. Every person, every evening, he, the palace is Nasham by Hashem. It's all tired. And in the morning, he gets it back new and fresh. The Goinim felt it's important to say a bracha on this chesed. However, since this is not from the time of the Gemara, the Rambam has issues with this bracha. There is no one after the closing of the Gemara who has the ability to enact a bracha. So that's what this, this sheet to help. However, it says this does not have the power to this time does not have the power to push away the minig and the takon of the Goin to do this bracha. However, any bracha which is not enacted by the Goinim. The Goinim is a period of time before the Rishonim, before the Ramam and the Rosh. Or the Goinim did make it. However, that bracha did not... Um, did not spread throughout Kali Yisrael. They did not take it up as a minik. If it wasn't accepted by the, the Tzibur, you don't say it at all, that they were hacking into all opinions. Some printers of Sadurim, they are printing many different types of Akashas, many types of, uh, of requests. They put into the Siddur, and at the ending they write, Baruch Atah Hashem. The words, Baruch Atah Hashem, you can't do that. You have no power to do it. It's something only special people had. And therefore it's a Baruch Atah Hashem. People to say other Baruchas, like these Baruchas that we just mentioned. Don't we say it? No. You oh, say, no, you say, it is a mistake. One should not say them at all. So, the Maisa, we do say, <coughs> Now, the Maisa Siv Zayin is the finishing of discussion of these brachas. And from afterwards, we'll start discussing um, some other brachas, brachas atoyda, and other things. Now, one of the big issues here is, what do I do on a day? We say brachas in the morning. Originally, you were supposed to say it when you did the act. When you put on your shoes, you should show also the katsarki. Like when you wash your hands, say, on until the time. When you hear the rooster, hanes zachvina we said because of various reasons, Chachamim pushed it off and said you can wait and it should be said in shul. The Chazan should say it in shul and people can listen and answer Amin. However, what happens if Bechlal, you did not put on your shoes that day? You didn't wear shoes. You came to shul without shoes. Or you, you, you in your house, you didn't put shoes yet. Or you didn't, you're in your house. Or you, if somebody you can't leave your house and you're diving in your house and you're not wearing shoes. Or you didn't hear have a, you don't have a rooster, <coughs> right? So what? So you're allowed to say the brachas in the shul or not? Till now we don't know. It seemed like you can't do such a thing. We should be a big shaila on how we say brachas every day. 
<coughs> so the Maisa, there's a number of opinions. I think there's three opinions in total what we should do about this. And Siv Vav. Siv Zayin. Kol Be'eches HaShachar. Any brachas in the morning, if one is not obligated in one of them, for example, a belt, you're up the whole night, you do not need to wipe the sleep of your eyes. What should you do in the case when you are not obligated in these brachas? Three opinions. Some say, that bracha which you are not chayven, you don't say it. You don't say that bracha. Skip it. Others say, depends which ones. This opinion says depends which ones. Things which are about the order of the world, the nature of the world, that you say even though you didn't have hana from it. Hashem gave Bina to the rooster. It has nothing to do with you. Whether you heard it or whether you didn't have it, the rooster has the, the, the wisdom that when it's dawn, it, 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 it crows. So that's nothing to do with you. It's about the world. The fact that Hashem, on the second day of creation, made that the earth should rise and there should be a basha. Should be placed that you can walk. This is not something to do with whether or not you had enough from it or not. It exists on its own. It's, it's the nature of the world. So says the Shita, after Bishon is and these brachas, even though you were not obligated in it, you did not walk on the ground, you never left your bed. You didn't hear the rooster, you still say it. Those brachas that were are about your pleasure, whether you have benefit from it. You put on your clothing. That Hashem helps men walk. The fact that you put on your belt. That you put on a hat. A yarmulke. If you're not obligating it, okay, for example, you stayed in bed. And those days, you go to sleep without clothing. Underneath your blanket, you stayed there without clothing. So you didn't walk. You didn't put on clothing. He didn't put on a belt, he didn't put on a hat. So many brachas that you're not chayven. Hamechem etzad de gover, malbo sharumim, o yisab gvura, so all these four brachas, you're not chayven. Lo yiman and klal, these four brachas, these brachas don't save them at all. Hmm. Only one she's about to save to the world. We have a third sheet, the yeshayim rim, a third opinion. It's a big machleik is yeshayim rim over here. Even if one is not obligated at all in any of the brachas, you should still say the brachas in shul in the order that they are written in the siddur. The brachas are not on his own benefit. We thank Hashem that He created the needs of the world, the needs that people need. This you did you take benefit of that day? Maybe you didn't, but you have it. You have the availability. You're not having hana. Someone else is having hana. Who This third shita v'chein haminig pasha. The basic minig and klal so is like this third opinion. And although we did not chay or not chayv in any of these, that's how we're able to say anaisim l'sachivin every day. You didn't hear the the rooster. We're still able to say it. The Ein Lashan is one should not change from the Minig like this opinion. However, Yesh Mishoyim, there is an opinion which says, Sha'afa became, even though we hold like the third opinion, Suma, blind person, lo yivarech pekech ivim. A blind person cannot say pekech ivim. Hashem opens up the eyes. Kivin shudabar hachasa begovi. Since he can never have this benefit. It's he can never have this benefit ability. He can't make this bracha. Someone who is deaf, he can make the bracha that about the rooster. I he never heard a rooster. The bracha does not mention you have to hear it. 
you mention about that a rooster has this ability. So it's not posh that a blind person can say this bracha. I got but every, everyone else could say all the brachas, even that morning when at Chayim, in Shul, and at home, you say the brachas. Maybe the Pokea Chivrim, yeah. if the Chachamim will let them say it, he's saying Hashem. That's the moment, maybe you open my eyes. He's asking Hashem. Yeah, yeah, he's asking Hashem. We see Baruch Hashem, but he doesn't see. So if he will say it, but Pakeh okay, is saying okay. it's a fact. You can maybe say it filah, but this is a fact. He is Pakeh my eyes, and he. Maybe you could say Pakeh other people, and I, but not him. I can have Lashon Bakasha. Let us see. It's fine. Hashem, please, Pakeh Evrim. You, you the one that Pakeh Evrim. Open my eyes. Now, what? One more line. Chetchila toiv lahavi asim dechiu kol abroch as mefshali. Lachatchila wants to try to be yotze the other other shita that you should that you should try to make yourself obligated in all of them. Try to say the bracha after you did all everything. So I already put on a gartel and I already put on a, I already put on a belt no. and I put on a hat and I'm dressed and I so then you say the brachas if possible. We may if it's impossible to do all of them. At least do whatever you could to try to do as many as you could. Now, I just want to point out that many Chabad is not to say it in the shul, like many Kehillahs do. They say it at home already because uh, this is because there are people a lot of times get stuck at home and do other things and, and therefore one should say it as soon as he could. To, uh, if you, uh, so those days, people, as soon as they got up, they went straight to Shul. So then it makes sense that even today, if someone does that, you can go straight to Shul, and people will say straight to Shul. But as people say in the, in the house, and they're taking the time, they should say all the brachas first. Especially also if they're going <coughs> to uh, drink and eat something, then definitely you should say all the brachas and Kriyashma first before. And Mahadrin... There are people that are mahadr and they even put on tefillin before they eat in the morning. Not before drinking, before eating. But a lot of shul saying the brachot in the shul and people answer amen. After each brachot, they answer thing. amen. It's, it's a a beautiful. Thing. Yeah, very nice. Thing. Every place has its minig, you know? Yeah. It's also very important sometimes that a lot of times people don't say it at home, so they might not say it. So. It, Therefore, they in the shul, they hear it and they say amen. So there is such a an advantage, but it's not the meaning in Chabad. But those places have that reason to do it. And it makes sense. But I was in Someone is in a shliach at a place. He has to think about it. Uh, you know, if people are coming and they not necessarily said the brachot at home, <laughs> then he should be better, saying it. Better for care. And I was in Rotei Pinikov made put in in the morning before chesedus. Uh, I used to go make the early, come and have a coffee or this, and no, no, put it in, then have the coffee and cake. Because you shouldn't eat before you do a mitzvah. Before you do a mitzvah. Okay, Sif Ches. Yes, we come out. Say that the, the, the famous Chassid is also a big guy in. Of Hillel Paracher, as a chassid of Samach Tzedek, so once this fire, his house, the fire broke out in his house, and his house burned down. And he right away said, the, uh, started dancing for joy, and he said the bracha, he said, he said, what are, you, what are you dancing? What are you saying this bracha for? He said that if I was a goy, so then this my whole life just burned down. This is my life. My life is my house and my belongings. But since I'm a Jew, that's not my life, my belongings. <laughs> so I thank Hashem that I'm not a guy and I, and I have a, a life, and, and therefore, <laughs> that's not my life. And it's not for everyone, this. Uh, you have to be Baal Madrega, you know? We sometimes hear about different Sadiqim when Yisurim happened, how happy they were. But you have to know if you're. <laughs> And not on this level that you have to can't fool yourself, you know? Just to make believe is not. Uh... I've always of a uh, grandfather, he's a secretary from the. Not, not uh, his, his grandfather, a secretary from the Fili Rebbe. 
one time in Lubavitch it was a fire. But then when fire go, it's one after the other. Right away, it's no fire truck come. People take bucket and yeah, yeah, yeah. So when the fire started, he left his house and his wife and his kid, and he went to the river house to take out the exoving, to save the exoving. So wow. then later on, his wife says, "What you did? Why don't you think about the kid and uh, and us first before the this? Sorry, this uh, this is my life." So she wanted to divorce him. <laughs> <laughs> she went to divorce him. He said, "This is my life." <laughs> Said it enough for breaking on That's a high level of people. You know? <laughs> there was once the the Tzemach Tzedek, you know, when the Alter Rebbe was still Rebbe, Zayde, the Alter Rebbe was Rebbe, Tzedek was married, and the Alter Rebbe wanted to see so him, the things that his grandson called. is writing. Now his the Tzemach Tzedek's wife, his Rebbetzin, was also a granddaughter of Tzemach Tzedek. He married his first cousin. They're both grandchildren. So Masada called his granddaughter in and said that she should bring him from something for her husband. The, the Alter Rebbe said. Alter Rebbe said to bring from the, 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 the Samach Tzedek's writings. So she brought him something, it was a Sefer Derech Mitzasecha, and that he had uh, was writing in, his younger, writing in his younger years, writing uh, deep things of Hasidus. So when he saw it, the Alter Rebbe was so happy to see that, you know, his grandson is such a high level. So he called in some of the great Hasidim and he and he maybe he said a Shachiyan or something, he told them that, you know, we have such a that some Sadik heard about it. He wanted he was a big big Shalom with his wife. Ooh, <coughs> like, why is she bored of He wanted the words there. <laughs> so it was for a long time that he there was an issue going on for a while. And then one time the Alter Rebbe said that I see. I, 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 I. Oh, he made no. Happen was he made right away something like a med or something that he, he's gonna divorce or not having a no or something. And she, and and, and 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 she didn't know what to do. And the Alter Rebbe, she told the Alter Rebbe about it. And the Alter Rebbe, at one point later on, like called him over and said that I heard that you have like a certain shaila that you don't know how to deal with. And mm-hmm. with saying maybe we should look into the sugi together. We should study it. And think if we could find a hetter or something, maybe we could work on it together. Wow. Discuss it. So, he's, you know, he spoke together with him, you know. And anyway, he gave, he promised him that he'll learn with him privately if he forgives her and, uh, Go back you know. <laughs> so he did, huh? Yeah. Yesh, Mekoymis. Different people fight about different things, yeah. you know. Yesh, and Shenoigel, Asad, Debiches, HaToyda. Some places have the minig to say the birchas hatoyra koidem pashatam before we say the pashat hatamid. Why? The pashat hatamid is we say every morning the, in, in karbanis the part which you talk about oilas tamid the carbon oila that we bring in the morning and at night. Why should we say before? Because this is a part of the Torah. This is a part, of, a portion in the Torah. Pashas Pilchas, and we need to say um, before you learn any Torah, to so say the bracha on the Torah. <laughs> However, many bra- t- we say many many pesukim before this. In Chayshim, as I hold very many sederet tachnumin, the loy derech lima vekriya b'Torah. So there's a difference whether you say a pasuk because you're learning, or whether you say the pasuk as a beseechment, as a tefillah, as a tchina. When you're using out a pasuk as a tchina, as a, a tefillah, you don't have to say the berachas atayda. But when you're saying it as you're learning the pashas hatamid, reading it, then you have to say the berachas atayda. However, the truth is, as the Alter Rebbe, the Yoyser Nochem Minig Hanoigin Levarich Miyad Achashayatz Lekaneshama. They really one should say it right after Achashayatz Lekaneshama. Hoy Achar Goyim Achasan Teivim Hiratzin Koydin Shoyim Shum Pasuk Mimikar. Before one says any passing, that's our minik to do right after Hagoyim al Chasadim Toivim. Because if we don't want to say any psukim of the Torah, not only Pasha the Talmud, better to not say any pasuk, even if you say the pasuk in a manner of tefillah, it's better to be machmer and say Bech first. 
What should you do in Slichas? The days of Slichas, you say Slichas in the early morning, right? Before the evening. So say, say Berchus Torah before Slichas. And then skip it later. Later on when you're going to be saying the rest of the Brachas, going back, you don't need to say Berchus Torah again. So you don't need to say all the Brachas before Slichas. You just say Berchus Torah. Asha Yatzer, Lakayin Hashem, Berchus Torah. This should be the minig in all places to say Berchus Torah right away. Those places have the minig that someone says the brachis by the standard of the Amud. So if someone said it already in the morning because he said Slichis or whatever it is, so you should have someone else say it there who didn't say it yet. Because maybe there's someone else who doesn't know how to say Berch Satayr, you should be able to say Amin. And Yas of Rosh Hashanah of Yom Kippur. Same thing in Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur. Not sure why he mentioned Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur. Okay, next if. We're now moving on. We finished with the brachas. Berachas atayir. We're going to discuss and the next simon is a simon for itself, all about berachas atayir and zayin. Some people open at night. Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. So maybe that's why he's mentioning it. It's no slichus. I don't know. In the morning, we also say during kabbanis we say shema. We should say shema. Better to say shema shachris, shema and baruch shem. Some people say sometimes they add different piyutim in, into the davening. Let's say middle of Berchas Kriyashma. They add in different parts. And maybe by the time they're going to say Kriyashma, it's going to be after Zman Kriyashma. So put it into Karbanis, Shema and Baruch Shem. So at least your yaitzah min ha-toyrah, according to the shita that holds, is just shema is, is min ha-toyrah. Because there are, there's a shita that just the pasuk shema itself is min ha-toyrah. That's all you need to say for kiyosh. So at least you should be yaitzah like that, a pingdom. So say it in brachis, in the karbanis. So but even though by the time you come and davening to shema, it's already past the time, you're already yaitzah. When we call makim, still in the laugh, even though every day you say shema in the morning, you should not have kavana to be yoitza only when you're afraid that the, the minion is going to miss the time of Kriyashma. However, when you the tzibur is not going to miss man Kriyashma, don't be yoitza over here. Don't be yoitza by kabbanis. Motiv lots the Kriyashma by tzibur. The best is to say Kriyashma with the minion together. With the Kreisa Kedin Ebrechasa, say it with its brachas before and after. The Lisme Gulat feeling to say, God, you saw right next to Shmaneser. That's the best manner to say Kriyashma. So if they're not gonna, if they're gonna make Sman Kriyashma, don't be Yoitza with what you say in Karbanas. If they're not gonna make it, be Yoitza with them. Ukeshiyari shall see by Yavas Man Kriyashma. If you take uh, are afraid, that the tzibur is going to go say Shema after Zman Kishma. Yesh likli likli is kol apasha. We show you that he lost the chavos. The name is kol apasha in the Torah. Say we say this every day. You should say the parasha we show you of tul of vishirecha every day in Karbanis. If you have a ma afraid that people are going to the tzibur is going to miss it. He adds a parenthesis. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the next simon. And if you have a you have a mind that you're going to be able to do it, you have And if you have your the other third opinion is that you have to say also the Hayyim Shemaya. So there's three opinions. Just Shema. Midrabana, we also say Barashim. Uh, second way is that uh, we say Tove Shurecha. And the third way is also the Hayyim Shemaya. But Yomer is not part of Kishma Menatoya. So if you're worried, say all the parashiyas. And have a mind, if you're not sure if you're going to miss, have a mind to say, if I don't, if it's not, 
If it's not, if I will make it, the Tzibah will make it, I don't want to be yoytz with what I'm saying now before davening. I want to be yoytz with what I'm saying in, with the Tzibah together. Avol, Shechina, Sotiyas Mitzrayim, the last two lines, Avol, Bishim, Mitzvah, Sagam, Kim, Zman, Kriyishma, even though Chazal said that we should be y- y- remembering Yitzis Mitzrayim, should be done during when we rem- say Kriyishma, it's a separate mitzvah. You're supposed to remember Yitzis Mitzrayim every day. Chazal stuck it together with Kriyishma. We have to know why, but Chazal did this. They put the mitzvah of Shechina, Yitzis Mitzrayim, together with the mitzvah of Kriyishma. They bundle it together. We say in Hoidu, we say Hashem took us out of Mitzrayim. So we mentioned it already. So you don't need to say that Yoimer. In Tanya, it explains what's the connection between Yitzhak and Mitzrayim and Shema. Because both Yitzhak and Mitzrayim and the Muvana Ruchni means that someone is going to go out from the Mitzarim, Mitzarim El Shem Mitzar Gvul, go on Mitzarim and Gvulim from Klippa and from the Yitzhahara, to go on Mesirat Nefesh. And that's the Ina Shema Hashem Echod, that the person gives his life Hashem Echod. It's a similar concept. Let's, try, let's finish a similar, go to Maidev, Sif Yud. We say after Shema and the Brachis in, in Karbana, say, Atu Ashleini Vroilam, Atu Mishinu Elam. So, I'll tell you, don't say Atu Ashleini Vroilam. But Masha no go lachte and Baruch Tashem Mekadish. Those people say Hashem's name. We don't say Hashem's name. We say Baruch Mekadish Mebaram. Baruch Kadish. We don't say Baruch Atu Hashem. We miss that Hashem's name. It's not mentioned in our Gemara. You know where it's mentioned? It's only mentioned in Talmud Yerushalmi. Even in Talmud Yerushalmi, there's an opinion that that's not the proper Nusach. You're not supposed to say Baruch Hashem. We don't find that the Goenim said that we should say this Atu Hu Ad Shalei Nivra Oilam, we should say Baruch Hashem Eka Hashem Aram, like we find Manasseh Yav Kech. Alakim and Shanogu Nogu, those people that have the minig already, they have that minig. Minaroi, they shouldn't have it, but that's why they have that minig already. Gharaitz Lizar Shav Hachmer Asas Atu Vesav Bechavah Atolo, Yafuwe. So someone who, who doesn't want to enter into an issue of Asav Bechavah Atolo should not say it. We're not telling these people to stop because it's a minig. Okay. Even though we feel better, they shouldn't have been such a minig. But there is such a minig now. But if someone on his own doesn't say it, it's a good thing. And we don't say it. What? I don't know if anyone else does, but we don't say they it. Want... Then they say Hashem's name, Baruch Atah Hashem Mekad Hashem Anyone say Hashem's name there? Yeah, yeah. They say Hashem. Muslim Hashem does say it. Yeah. Okay. See? We have a seed over here, we could look. Yeah, yeah. Al-Pi ha based on the soid of the Torah, secrets of the Kabbalah. There's an Indian, it's based on the Zoyer and the Kisra Rizal. Yishloimer Apostle Gani Bei Chazdecha, Chazdecha, Koyidim Bei Bei Sagnes, before you enter Shul, but can you say, Yoimer, we enter Shul, the base of the Kim, the Halach Baragish, and you can't miss Asi Shalom after the Kamaycha. According to the Tfilish, accept upon yourself the mitzvah. Half the leicha kamaycha. Yeshu shakabal v'yadi loy mishmai parasha shmai yisol because you yoytzim me beis mitzvah. Some people have the minute have a have a tradition that when they leave their house they say shema on the way to shul. Someone one time wrote to the Rebbe, how could we say hareini mekabal loy mitzvah shabbat v'kamaycha? I'm taking upon myself the mitzvah. Whenever so you take it's upon a, yourself, a when you want to take upon yourself mm-hmm. something, you have to say b'li neder. Say b'li neder. So the Rebbe, you can't say B'li Neder a Mitzvah. It's a Mitzvah say, but have to You don't have a choice. But you like it or not, you have to say it. He's right. In the Siddur at Nusach Ashkenaz, they actually say, Baruch HaTashem HaKadosh Mevaram. They have a little star in the bottom that Yesh Negin Lacht in Belay HaSkadosh Hashem. No. That is what their Nusach is. It's a true Siddur. Yeah, they tell you what to do. Ours does too. It's Koryaku. Yeah.
Did it give characters? I, I used to say it, but uh, quite. I didn't say it. Uh, <laughs> I see, they moved the three brachas earlier. What they do is, they do Shalai Sani Goy. They start with Shalai Sani Yom Edi Shalai Goy. Right. Yeah. Mm. You also do? But these three after Nesel Achavina? These three say after Nesel Achavina? We don't say the Devarim. It's fine. But these... No, we say it. You say in this order? Yeah. Okay, in Chabad they say this at the ending. The last one. Uh, here you say this in the beginning. How Actually, I know I can understand what they say in the beginning. Because what we just as soon as you woke up in the morning, you're saying, I wasn't created this. Agoy. Right. Okay, next week we'll learn the Berch on the Torah. There's three brachas to say. And we'll talk about the Berch on the Torah. next week.